Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Noel and today we're going to be going back to basics and back to analog. A lot of the recent content has been more digital pro digital product focused, easy for you to say. And we've been looking at things like the EverSolo streamer, the Weem streamer. Today we're going very analog and taking a look at different types of cartridge, different types of styli and exactly what they can offer for you. I think it's an area that it's very easy to, to look at one cartridge and another and go, that one's more expensive, so that is a better cartridge. But sometimes I think people don't necessarily understand why. It can be a bit of a rabbit hole of a subject, so we're gonna try and tread the line of not going super, super, super in depth into how cartridges work. But we are gonna try and touch upon the key differences when comparing moving magnet, moving coil, different shapes of stylus, all that kind of thing. So hopefully you do enjoy this one. Support on last week's video, the Rubicor 6, absolutely sensational. So thank you so much for that. Again, if you do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So the three cartridges next to me here that we've got are the Goldwyn 1042, the Auto Technica VM95E, and then the Autophon 2M Red, which kind of represents the whole 2M range and the quintet that I'm going to be talking about a little bit as well. But these are all fantastic options at their price points for depending on what kind of cartridge that you're looking to get or what kind of deck that you're trying to fit. The reason that I've chosen these three is that I think no matter what deck you've got, one of these will be compatible and provide a great sound. To kick things off, we're going to be looking at moving magnet versus moving coil cartridges. Now, this is something that can be as complicated or as straightforward as you want to make it really. Um, in a nutshell, moving coil is always going to offer you, so offer you a superior sound. Um, it gives you better tracking, it has better detail retrieval, the cartridges tend, cartridges tend to be of a higher quality overall, better materials are used in them, but the big positive when it comes to moving magnet is the replaceable stylus, something you often don't get when it comes to moving coils. So if you wanted to upgrade your stylus without having to change the whole cartridge, that is an option with a lot of moving magnets, whereas with a moving coil, when eventually you do wear out the diamond stylus, you're gonna to have to replace the whole cartridge and not just the stylus, unfortunately. Also worth bearing in mind is the fact that if you do have a moving coil cartridge, you're gonna need a special phono station to let that operate. Um, the reason being is the uh, the moving coil operates at a much lower output level, and you need something that's gonna boost that signal. So a special MC phono stage will be required, something that with a moving magnet cartridge, you know, almost every phono stage, unless it's an MC specific one, it's just not a concern at all. So do bear that in mind. If you're looking at a moving coil, you're gonna need some sort of MC phono stage to go with it. The next thing to bear in mind when you're looking at cartridges is going to be the actual stylus that's attached to them. Now, this is where the bulk of the of the money is when you're looking at cartridges. You will notice, actually, if you do buy a moving magnet, we touched upon just now the fact that you can get replaceable styluses. When you're buying a whole moving magnet cartridge, the, the price difference is pretty negligible, to be honest with you, when you're looking between getting just a replacement stylus or the whole cartridge because all of the money is of course in that diamond tip and there's lots of different variations of types of diamond style that you can get now. The first thing that we'll talk about here is the, well, we'll go through all the different shapes essentially starting off with the conical which is the most basic style of cartridge you can get now. These again, it's interesting because you would think really the further up the tree you get, the better you're gonna get, and that is the case to a certain level, but the basic conical style I do still have a place in people's systems. The reason being is because of the shape of them, they're super durable, but because of their, I don't wanna say lack of picking up detail and lack of going deep into a record's groove, it does mean if you're using it on like a, a ward record or a dirty record or something like that, it's actually it's actually less likely to pick up the crackles, it's less likely to pick up the, the faults within the record. So if you've got a really battered old record, a conical stylus can often be the way to go. So the step up from the conical stylus tends to be the elliptical. Now this is actually an incredibly popular style of cartridge. Things like the Audio Technica VM95E, a lot of you will be very familiar with, I'm sure. And what this gives you is a step up from the conical that provides a lot better tracking, it gives a lot better detail retrieval, it gives a much better frequency response range as well, but obviously because it's going deeper into the record and tracking better, you're going to be picking up more of those faults in the record. So again, if you're using really old, dusty, dirty, um, dirty records, then this is going to be picking up those um, those cracks, those skips a lot more easily than a conical. But the ellipticals are fantastic, and this is also where we'll touch upon a, a, another variation you can get within uh, the different start types of style. So anyone that's familiar with the Audio Technica range, it's a really good range for demonstrating this. But you'll see there's a there's a VM eight ninety five E. 
and then there's an EN, and what the N stands for in that situation is a nude compared to a bonded stylus. Now, a bonded stylus is essentially where the tip of the diamond has a, a bond fitted to it that then attaches it to the cantilever of the cartridge. Now, the downside to having that is obviously, if you can imagine you've got a whole diamond going into the groove, whereas opposed to just the tip of a diamond, again, you're gonna be picking up a lot more detail, you're gonna get a much better tracking. So, a lot of people prefer the nude cartridges, but there is a big discrepancy in price. I mean, these cartridges, so the, the E and the EN are essentially identical, other than the fact that the stylus is nude rather than bonded. And uh, I believe the E comes in around £50, whereas the EN is almost double the price at 109 at retail. So you do pay for your nude cartridge, but if you do go down that road, you're gonna be getting so much more detail and a much more musical sound, generally speaking. So that's worth bearing in mind. That's something that's not just for Audio Technica cartridges. They just, they're really easy to show the example of that because they're very clear with the, the way they name their products. So you've got the VM95E, EN, the VMN95E, the EN. So uh, that's something that's worth bearing in mind. But yeah, elliptical Starlight, are fantastic for detail. And again, a nice step up on the conical, but without going up to the, the crazy levels where these can get super expensive. They tend to be really good value for money, the ellipticals. And I think this is where you guys are gonna to start to see a pattern forming here. The next stylus up from that tends to be the micro linear. Again, if we're then comparing that against the elliptical, so something like the Audio Technica that, we, Technica that we were talking about just now, again, you're getting better tracking. Again, you're getting a higher frequency response. Again, you're getting more detail, and a lot, a lot of people would argue a lot more musical, but again, the downside, these are a lot, lot better at picking up faults, if that's the right way to describe it. So again, if you've got a dirty record, that's really gonna show up big time in a microlinear stylus. And at this point as well, the style I tend to jump up quite a lot more in price. So this is why a lot of people go for the elliptical. Again, very good bang for your buck, the microlinear, undoubtedly a step up, but you are jumping up quite a lot in terms of budget at this point. So the level up from the microlinear is the Shibata. Now the Shibata stylus, um, I'm holding a 2M red here, but I'm actually gonna be talking about the Quintet Black S, also an Autofarn um, cartridge. The Shibata, again, continues that same theme that we've been discussing up to now, where much more accurate tracking, much more detail retrieval, much better frequency response. Um, again, it's gonna be picking up those faults more frequently. I feel like I'm saying the same thing here about every step up, but you can see the pattern that's forming. The real thing you've got to bear in mind when you get to this kind of level and the fine line, the contact line that we're gonna talk about in just a second, is because you're going so deep into the groove at this point, wear and usage can be a much bigger factor. Now, don't get me wrong, when you're using a stylus, you're still gonna get hundreds, if not thousands of hours out of it before it needs replacing, especially if it's been maintained and especially I think when you're looking at things Shabbat upwards, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your records are clean, they're in good nick before you just put the stylus down, put it before you put the needle down. As long as they're well maintained, you're gonna be getting thousands of hours out of them, but it is worth bearing in mind, if you were using a Shibata stylus consistently on dirty records, it would be noticeable how much quicker that would wear out when you compare that to the um, to the conical that we spoke about at the very beginning, which obviously just isn't getting as deep into the groove. So that's worth bearing in mind, but Shibata style, I actually, for me, tend to be the kind of ones that I look at, because again, I think you get a fantastic amount of detail retrieval, frequency response range is phenomenal, and um, it's just a wonderful musical sound typically overall. After that, you've then got the line contact style that I briefly mentioned just now, and these are the ones that go deepest into the grooves. They retrieve the most amount of detail. They've got the highest frequency range, but again, that wear is a big factor. If you can imagine, you're going really deep into the stylus groove, uh, into, so into the record groove, sorry, at this point. So not only are you gonna be wearing down your starlight quicker, you're gonna be wearing down the record quicker as well. So again, I would say if you're using dirty records, this isn't what you wanna be using because you're gonna be picking up all the imperfections in the record. But if you've got an immaculate record, using something like this is gonna unlock absolutely phenomenal musicality. Like I say, great detail retrieval. And, when you compare these, I mean, I've, I've seen evenings before where manufacturers, are, manufacturers have kind of gone from the start of the range up to the top, and it can be breathtaking, to be honest, the differences between the start and you know the real high end, just the amount of detail. You're kind of picking up things in the records that you would never hear on a conical, that you would never hear on an elliptical. And um, yeah, the, um, the contact lines tend to be just the most musical, not necessarily the most musical, but they certainly retrieve the most detail and then the most accurate sounding. But again, you're sacrificing some of that wear and um, that's certainly worth bearing in mind. The final thing that I wanted to touch upon on this is just compatibility, because I think that's the biggest question when it comes to a lot of people. Um, 
obviously the cartridge that you're choosing is going to massively in, in fact completely depend on the turntable that you've got there's simply going to be some cartridges that aren't compatible with some towing arms and, and turntables so that is going to be a huge factor when making your decision some people might decide to stay in-house so to speak so if you've got an audio technica turntable obviously to a lot of people getting an audio technica cartridge might make sense or for example if you've got a project turntable also find a company that do, that do a lot of work with project so therefore a lot of their cartridges are compatible with a lot of their turntable models so that can be a big factor and some might argue that yeah that makes sense because to a certain ex uh, to a certain extent these products are going to be tuned to work together they're going to be tested together to try and get the maximum out of one another but i'd encourage people to kind of look outside of the wheelhouse there's lots of great links out there that can help out with this and uh, autofon in particular i've got a fantastic one that i'll put in the description below where you can put the model of your turntable and it will tell you what cartridges they offer that are compatible with that it can take a little bit of research sometimes as well but it can be fully worth opening up the options and not necessarily just sticking with the brand of the turntable that you've got because um, there's a whole world of cartridges out there that offer different types of, of sound and um, you shouldn't be limiting yourself to just getting an audio technica because you've got an audio technica not that there's anything wrong with the audio technica cartridges they're fantastic in their own right but yeah it just seems a shame to limit yourself to that smaller pool when there's so many options out there sometimes so that's just about going to wrap this one up guys i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below i hope this was really helpful as i say i know the world of uh, cartridges and styluses can be a little bit confusing sometimes so if you do have any more questions be sure to leave those in the comment section down below and i'll do my best to answer those for you and if you're someone out there that thinks you've got a great stylus cartridge turntable combination i'd love to hear that from you as well but um, again thank you for tuning in and all your recent support we'll see you all in the next week's video enjoy the rest of your weekend guys